Welcome to another special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. Coming to you from a country rich in automotive history, the country of France. Okay, let's go. <laughs> we'll meet a car guy who hosts car shows at his chateau. Boris, you are living the life. <laughs> I try my best. And then we'll visit a castle filled to the brim with cars. This is the real beginning of car construction in France. And it all starts right now on McGuire's Car Crazy. We travel the world to talk with men and women who are passionate car guys to find out what makes people emotionally connected to their cars. It's time to get to the heart of the car guy. This is Car Crazy. We just made a stop here in St. Remy and Lowe, about an hour's drive northwest of Paris, picturesque little town. 456 people live here, and the rumor has it that the mayor of this town is a car guy, so that's why we're here. His name is Boris Gouni Gobert. They say he lives in a chateau. This is a chateau, must be the right one. Come on, let's see if we can find him, all right? This 18th century chateau has a considerable history. Originally owned by a nobleman who maintained a 70-man army, the property is full of beautiful buildings that have been full of Boris's cars. This is what you would call a chateau. So yes, here it is a, a chateau. French chateau. It's a little chateau. Did you tell me that Benjamin Franklin came here? Yes, he did. In uh, 1774, he came with a tree. It's a tulip tree. A tulip tree? From Virginia. Wow, I can't imagine. I tell you, people are all over the place in France are coming to see the tree. The history that's gone on yes. in this property. Now, you've always been a car guy, right? Yes. I, I, yes. Yeah, take me back. When did, when did it start for you? Oh, my God. <laughs> many, many years ago. My father was a car lover. So you never was car crazy. Of Citroën. <laughs> and uh, when I was five, I think I was starting driving on his knees. Sucks. Boris had a long career as a toy maker for Hasbro before settling in St. Remy, where his toys became cars of all types, like this classic Morris Minor, designed by Sir Alec Exigatus, designer of the original Mini. This is something different. Alec was uh, one of those fantastic designer, and he, he designed that small cars. Back in 1959, 1960, he took 10 cars, which are prototypes, and this is a, one of the 10 prototypes. Is and that funny right? enough... It I, really is a rare yeah, car. Yeah, it's a very rare car. It looks absolutely original inside. It is. The, the inside, as the, the seats are mm -hmm. the seats of 1961. Mm -hmm. But Boris's long-time obsession has been with Jaguars, and he's had a bunch of them over the years. Now, he's a bit more practical with his choices. Like every collector's, I start by buying everything I find. <laughs> right? Right, right, right. As my wife will say, all yeah. your rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> when all those buildings were full with Jaguars, uh, one day she said, well, how long are you going to keep those cars? And then I start making my choice. So you really got serious. You were a serious collector of Jaguars. And Boris was successful in passing his car crazy gene down to his children, one of whom is the owner of this sleek Lotus Elise. As you can imagine, I have four children, one daughter, three boys. And mm -hmm. the three boys are crazy about cars. Those cars one day will be for them. I tell you what, Boris, you are living the life. <laughs> <laughs> I try my best. Boris has always taken his family along on his road trips in his beloved Jaguars. His favorite rally is the historic Tour Auto, which runs through Paris to the south of France. The funny thing is with the car lovers, they, they can be a mechanic, they can be a president or chairman mm. of a company, mm. and when they're all together, mm. they speak about cars. Isn't that so? uh, I try to have a few friends all the time coming here, especially at that time. In two weeks' time, we'll have a, a picnic here. A great uh, destination for car guys. Yeah, I, will show, I will show you a place, <laughs> which is a very special place that we don't use too much. The grounds of the chateau are absolutely breathtaking. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this canopy of trees that completely covers the lawn where Boris holds his car guy get-togethers. We will have a picnic, a competition, a concours d'élégance. <laughs> for the picnic with the cars. You are such a fine. You know, we just never know what we're gonna bump into. You just find car guys yeah, in the yeah. most amazing places. They're all around us. And of course, you have so many of them beating their path to your door. Great fun in two weeks when you have yeah. the next group of car guys coming through. Yeah. 
Man, wonder if I can get back. Mm, I'll have to work on that. No problem. <laughs> As our journey continues, we're off to the beautiful city of Lyon, France, a world heritage site and home to Belarche, the oldest car museum in France. The museum is spread between a 16th century castle and an additional building built to hold the overflow. But first, there's a car show going on right here in the parking lot. Before we even go into the museum, we couldn't help but see all these beautiful cars out in the parking lot. Had to find out what's going on, so I find these two great guys. Meet Eric Boley and John Batiste, two American car guys, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, they're sort of American car guys. You like American cars. Well, what is it about American cars that you like so much? Beautiful cars, very large, large cars, more larger than French cars or European cars. Uh -huh. More powerful. Which which one of these cars is yours? Uh, Camaro 74. The, the 74 Camaro. Yeah. I saw that. The red one back there. Yeah. It's a very very powerful car, very drivable car. A good car for a weekend. And, 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 and you like the sound of the V8 engine? Yes, absolutely. It's a big, <laughs> the big V8. Uh, you have other American cars as yes, well. I've Tell got, me. Yes, I've got a Pontiac. Pontiac. Pontiac, yes. Catalina. Really? Convertible. Oh, my 69. Lance. These are American car guys. Yes. Uh, talk to you a little bit, John. This is 31 Ford right yeah, behind you here. Yeah. But this is a very special one from what I understand. This was not made in the United States. No, it's a car made in France uh, in 1931 with a smaller engine than uh, the American one. But it but, looks the uh, same. Yeah, it, it looks, looks the, the same. same. It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you have? Something else American? Yeah, I get the Mustang. Mustang, you're yeah, Mustang, Mustang guy. Yeah, a 1968 one, really? a convertible. Really? Yeah. The name of their car club is La Manivelle, which translates as the crank. They have 120 members in their club and more than 200 cars, and per usual, they view their favorite museum as their meeting place. Why is this museum? so special to you? Because it's exceptional to have in uh, our country a museum like that. Exceptional car. There. Safe to say this is a meeting place for car guys. Yeah. This, is, this is a come yeah. for car guys yeah. to come and, yeah. and meet each other and show their cars and just like it is all over the world. It's American yeah. car guys Thanks from France. Thank you. <laughs> well, how cool was that? You know, I love how cars bring us together all over the globe. I have all these new car guy friends now and I haven't even gone inside the buildings yet. Coming up on McGuire's Car Crazy, it's the Gordini hallway of the marvelous Bellart Museum and home to one of the most sinister cars on the planet. Amazing car, but I still don't want to get too close to a lot of history here. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. The Bellart Museum is the oldest car museum in all of France. Shortly after the opening of this classic French car collection, it grew so large that the city had to actually expand with an additional building of the castle grounds. And our tour host is the car guy who keeps this special place rolling. We have a very special privilege today to be with Bernard Barreau, who is one of the most respected experts in the French automobile in all of France. And he happens to be the scientific curator here at the Mollarte, Musée Mollarte. I'll say it correctly, right? Absolutely. Tell us about Henry. Malarte and why he started, how he started this museum. He wanted to make from his private collection a museum, a public museum. And he opened this museum uh, on uh, 1960, the first car museum in France. First car museum. And you're telling me that in two years, the crowds were yeah, growing? Yeah, it, it, it had a great, great success. Immediately? It just Immediately, right because uh, it was quite new, a uh, car museum. And I look at all these cars, my gracious. Help us explain what we're seeing here. Here we, we see old cars from uh, 1905 mm -hmm. to uh, the end of the 60s. And the really good stuff between uh, 1895 and 1905 is yeah. in the castle. That's, yeah. that's what we're exactly. going to see. A lot of cars here that we're not all familiar with, a couple of them right behind us here. Talk about this car. This car is a Rocher Schneider built in Lyon. Those two cars have same chassis, same engine. Mm. They are from the they same no series. Idea. The uh, body was uh, entirely different because they were uh, oh, built sure, sure. by they went two, to coach builders. two independent they coach they builders. They built the, yeah. the drivetrain yeah. and the chassis, then they yeah. went to a coach builder. Yeah. This one was uh, built by a coach builder from Paris. OK, yeah. that's yeah. Yeah. the Paris coach builder okay. and the Lyon coach and, uh, builder of this exactly. one Exactly. Really. Just so much history here. I don't know how we're going to get it all in. 
The museum is packed with so many wonderful examples of French craftsmanship, not limited to just cars. That one quarter of the museum is an area dedicated to the cars of some of France's most celebrated historical figures. In this room, we have uh, personalities cars, such as the car from the Frère Lumière, who invented the mm. cinematograph in Lyon. They were here. Yeah, this is where they yeah, lived in Lyon. Yeah, yeah. The creators of yeah, cinema. We wouldn't yeah. even be here today yeah, yeah, yeah. doing this if it wasn't for them. Yeah. Especially yeah. built for them in uh, 1933. Also on display is the early example of the quintessential French motorcycle. It's an uh, Keller Escoffier, rare uh, French uh, mark for uh, sports uh, motorcycles. You, you have trains. I saw a hybrid over there. Not like any hybrid I've ever seen. It's not gas electric, it's gas and yeah, wood. Yeah, gas and yeah. wood burning. During the Second World War, we didn't find uh, gasoline, so uh, some people tried to uh, make the cars run with uh, gas uh, issued from uh, wood. You uh, lose 30% uh, of uh, power, but the engine still runs. Still runs, and, this, and you don't have to use the gasoline, the engine, which yeah. was in short supply. Yeah. And if it wasn't for the owner of this next car, that gas would not have been in such short supply. Well, this is easily the most sinister car yeah. in your collection. It's uh, one of the two uh, parade cars uh, personal for Hitler. This one was found in Birch's Garden, is yes. that right? Yes, by French where soldiers. His, his retreat, yeah. where he had his yeah. retreat, where he got yeah. away from everything. The bullet... Uh, they tested the, the uh, armor the windows, yes, glass. Oh, the, the front soldiers did? Yeah, French Just soldiers. Just to see if the bullets could yeah. go through the window. OK. A lot of famous pictures in this car. And of course, uh, I remember the ones where Hitler didn't sit in the back. He sat in the front yeah. as the passenger and yeah. stood, yeah. waving to the crowds. Exactly. This is amazing car, but I still don't want to get too close to a lot of history here. Bernard, this place is so fantastic. I mean, we came to see the treasure chest of the castle, mm -hmm. but what we've seen here has been worth the trip. I mean, really something, but we do want to see the castle, all yeah. right? Okay, <laughs> let's go. Coming up in McGuire's Car Crazy, we'll see the earliest cars in French history all kept in a majestic castle. And we'll hear the fascinating story behind the museum's curator, Henry Mallart. This car changed his life. Absolutely. All that and more right after this break. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. This is a magical place. You have to tell us about this castle. Tell us the history. Uh, this castle was built in uh, at the end of the 15th century. Uh, but it was unlucky and it was destroyed uh, during the French Revolution okay. at the end of the 17th. Okay. And it was quite rebuilt in uh, at the middle of the 18th century. Oh, so it's rather rather new, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not uh, for cars. And uh, yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Malat wanted to uh, put his, his collection in a special place. Right, so, he, so he, when did he buy this property? He bought the, muse the castle in uh, 1959. All the history here between the cars and, and the property itself. Yeah. A lot of, lot of stories. I can't wait to see yeah. it. Okay, take me Let's in. Let's go. Our viewers are going to enjoy it along with me. In 1931, Henry Millard purchased a car that was destined for his scrapyard. It was that car that started this car collection that became famous throughout all of France before it was open to the public 40 years later. He put uh, cars in pieces to sell uh, yeah. used parts. We would call it a salvage yeah. yard, is what we would call yeah. it. It began in 1929 and in Lyon, and in 1931, uh, this car was brought to him to be uh, put in pieces. To be dismantled. To be, yes. There was no sense to put that car in pieces. <laughs> so he, he kept it, he uh, restored it, and he was charmed by these very uh, old cars, also less cars. This car changed his life. Absolutely. Uh, he began a collector, the first, <laughs> uh, one of, among the first in France. I don't recognize it. What, what is this car? This car was built in Lyon in 1898. This is a Rochette. Rochette Schneider. Okay. Um, okay. The name of the first companies was often a double name because uh, there is a name of a mechanic and the name of the man who brought money. <laughs> who yeah. had the, who yeah. had the money? Yeah. That was the in uh, this case, uh, Rocher uh, uh, built uh, bicycles, uh, and uh, Schneider brought money to build cars. So it all began here, and yeah. now we're going to see a few more cars, okay. I think. I'm just struck by having these cars in this castle. I mean, it really is interesting. 
Well, you have some very old cars in this room. What is this? This is the real beginning of uh, car construction in France. And it began like a conflict, conflict wow. between steam and electricity and petrol. The steam-powered car marked France's entry into internal combustion back in 1892. One man built this entire car, as was often the case back then. Then, in 1900, the electric car was built. It was built in Paris, a uh, little Siri. Uh, this one is certainly the only one remaining. It's a solid three-wheel car there. <laughs> <laughs> and here? This, this is a tricycle with uh, mechanical systems used in uh, car building, such as the differential there, and the uh, direction there, and the uh, crankshaft, the crankshaft. Uh, <laughs> of our modern engines. Oh, yeah. And behind us, and behind this, we have this uh, horse's carriage. I mean, this is a horse's carriage. Absolutely. This car is a petrol engine built by a mechanic uh, who uh, built the car all alone. Again, all yeah. by himself. Yeah, all by himself. And he was uh, uneducational, yes. Unprofessional, uneducated? Yeah. He, he, he didn't he have the no, education? He didn't know how to write, how to... Uh, but you have a very, very clever spirit uh, oh, mind. Yeah. What, what yeah. year? What year uh, again? 1896. 1896. About 1896. Yeah. Yeah. Often he came back uh, behind the horse because the car was broken. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he revert uh, back to being a horse carriage. Yeah. Yeah. Horse carriage. Very old horse <laughs> We carriage. can understand that. Some of the most amazing French classics are just ahead, including one that was way ahead of its time, or at least its wheels were. They're tireless wheels. Yeah. Today, Michelin is working on such wheels. McGuire's Car Crazy. We'll be right back. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. We're continuing our tour of the Malat Museum in Lyon, France, with a castle full of historic French cars. Well, I recognize this car, uh, Pinard, from its distinctive front end. We have a few of these cars in the States, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, very old cars. So, uh, what year is this? This one was built in 1895. 1895, yeah, yeah. okay. Pinard and were the first uh, car builders to produce cars to be sold. To be sold. Yeah, it was a commercial vision. It was quite new. I gotta ask you, this begs the question. How do you get this car in this room? How, how is this possible? I'm looking around. <laughs> to, to bring it in there, we have to put it in pieces, yeah, to dismantle it. If we want to make it run, we have to dismantle it again and to bring the pieces to the shop. <laughs> to exercise it yeah, outside. Yeah. These, every, exactly. All these cars we're seeing exactly. are running cars. Quite every car is in running order, yes. And very, very old cars are <laughs> easier to uh, to keep in running order than modern ones. Yeah, yeah that's true. It's still a lot of work. <laughs> OK, let's keep going here. There's an astonishing number of rare French classics in this castle that are all from a single decade. So what do we have here? Here are the main uh, French makes at the beginning of the 20th century. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, here is uh, the Dion Bouton. Uh, the Dion Bouton was a make uh, founded by uh, the Marquis de Dion. The Bouton was the engineer. The Bouton was an engineer uh, specialist in uh, steam uh, toys. The Marquis de Dion gave him money to uh, build cars for his own pleasure. They built uh, very modern engines, petrol engines, and those uh, engines were fitted by many, many makes. Really? So like who? Uh, like uh, Renault, by uh, by example. Renault had a Dion engine in it? Yes. Is that right? This car is really? uh, one of the first Renault uh, brothers, and uh, the engine is uh, the Dion Bouton That's engine. Dion engine. Yeah. How about that? Look at this Peugeot. My goodness, what year this is, is this? This is Peugeot, yeah. This is a Coupe Peugeot from 90, 1899. 1899. Yes. All wood body, twin uh, cylinders engine at the rear. You, you think of what was happening in Germany, in France, independently. Yeah, independently. In, in, yeah. in, in America. Uh, everyone uh, was but looking for time, all this, it, Each one on their own, learning oh. the technologies. All righty, let's keep going. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> As we moved into the next century, the core was gaining respect for many reasons, including its remarkable wheels. I love discovering cars I've never seen before. Now tell me, this is a quarry or a, how core. do you say it? A core. A core is a very little make from uh, the uh, around Paris. Uh, they build cars from uh, several years only, and this is a quite rare car. But what is uh, most amazing mm -hmm. is uh, his wheels. Did you I see such wheels? I was looking at these yeah. wheels. Can you explain to me what they are? I've never seen these before. Yeah, those are elastic wheels. 
At the beginning of the um, inflated uh, tires, okay. uh, they were uh, very uh, fragile yeah. and very solid. Uh, heavy. Really solid so rubber? those are solid rubber tires. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And inside the wheel is an elastic, uh, elastic system. Oh, so it would take the compression. Yeah. And to, give you a softer ride. To, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. And those wheels are uh, now... I've seen yeah, this, they're, they're tireless uh, wheels, yeah. 100 <laughs> years later. <laughs> and just down the hall is yet another rare Peugeot with a notable history. Yet another vintage Peugeot. Yes, from 1903. This uh, Peugeot was built only four years after the other Peugeot, the blue one the you one saw, we just saw in the yes. former yes. room. Quite a bit of progress yes. there, huh? Yes, it was the first uh, car revolution. My lands. Yes. The cars you have assembled here are just amazing. I can't thank you enough. No, for, no, I, for, uh, <laughs> no for, problem. For, for, we, we don't go. We have other cars and other rooms upstairs. You have cars upstairs? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Amazingly, the second floor of the castle has even more to offer, and it doesn't stop there. You have cars everywhere here. I mean, every room. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I am overwhelmed. This is a castle full of cars. It really is. Not only for cars, because we have also a collection of motorcycles. Motorcycles? Yes. Where, where do you have those at? Just upstairs. The motorcycle collection is about uh, 50 uh, engine, uh, machines uh, from 1904 to the end of the 60s. This place yes. is a treasure chest. It really is. I mean, I got to tell you. Remember, we are in Lyon, France. France, and this is the, you say the, the name of the museum. The museum is the museum of Henri Malartre. 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 <laughs> you see Malartre. Yeah. In Lyon, France. Thank you, Bernard. This has just been really special. In all the years of doing this television show, we've never had an experience okay. like this. <laughs> it's fantastic. You know, it's been an adventure to travel through France finding these special places. It was fun being with you, Boris, and next time you have an event in that secret garden, well, you know where to find me. And to my new friend Bernard at the Millart Museum, you have the most amazing car guy venue I've ever seen. All of those rare cars and bikes reassembled in a 16th century castle? Come on, that's certifiably car crazy for sure. See you next time.